to help implement Pascal on computers of all different kinds, not only on one kind. It seemed that you had taken the approach that now is widely known as virtual machines, right? So you wrote compiler from Pascal to a computer that, a hypothetical computer, and then to port the code from this computer to an actual one, whichever it would be, was an easy thing. So do you think it was the first time when virtual machine came to existence? It, the, the it, idea was, of virtual it machine. was a technique known, but not widely known. But for instance, my earlier Euler language was also implemented in exactly this way, that you postulate the hypothetical instruction set and then implement that as an interpreter. And that's usually a small project, you know, it can't be done in a few days. And this is indeed how we helped uh, other universities adopt Pascal. They, they, they asked us uh, and uh, we said, well, we can send you our compiler, our P compiler for portable. And you simply have to write f with your, for your machine an interpreter for that P code. And that helped enormously spread the language. Also, I must say, uh, Pascal was released, a report, in 1970. And in 72, for the first time, we, I used it in teaching to large 300 people classes. But the actual breakthrough came several years later, namely around 75, when in America the, mini com the microcomputers had started spreading mm -hmm. and intruding into schools and households. And, and there, they, of course, had to have a compiler that was reasonably small because they had small memories. And Pascal compiler with this P code fitted into the small memory. That's when the company Borland in California picked up. Turbo Pascal. Turbo Pascal, exactly. Yeah. And the uh, big thing was, of course, they sold the diskette with the whole system for $50. <laughs> no, really? Yeah. Whereas compilers on mainframes cost $10,000 and more. <laughs>